Welcome back. You know what it is. Let's get into it. Andrew Gonzalez. I have a personal story about the Men in Black. I was like eight years old and living in El Paso, Texas at the time. And this old looking black and chrome sedan pulled up to my neighbor's house. These two men wearing black suits, black hats, and black sunglasses got out and walked up to the house and had little notepads and were writing things down and walking around the house. They knocked on their door, but nobody answered. I stood there in our yard watching them until one of them turned their head and looked at me for enough time to make me uncomfortable, and I walked back into my house. After all that, they just got back in their car and drove away, not saying they were there for aliens, maybe deportation officers or something, because I was in El Paso, but still kind of sus. Arlo the Redditor I'm not from Alabama but grew up in a small farm community in Maryland. Never saw something like this, but the smell is familiar. It makes the blood drain from your face. My grandparents would let me wander around the woods as long as I stayed close to the house, because there wasn't supposed to be anything big out there. I only did it a couple times, but there was a big stream that you could only cross by walking across this big fallen tree. As soon as you got on that side of the creek, the woods would go dead silent. Even in full spring and summer, the trees would barely have any leaves, like the woods had no life. Every time I was over there for more than a few minutes, I'd get hit with this sense of, I have to get the fuck out of here. Ooh, spooky. Allie Henry. I used to live right next to the old Alton Bridge. We used to throw small parties there, but we always made sure to never cross the bridge. The one time somebody did, their leg got broken, and they were never able to remember exactly what happened. We never partied there again, to say the least. Nicole and Josh Baldwin I used to go hiking alone all the time. Last time I did, I heard voices all around my tent, just like people describe. It's really weird to actually hear something like that. Can't wait till spring when the pools fill back up and I can go again. I hiked up a mountain once, woke up late and didn't realize it was a 10 mile hike straight up mountain. I got just about to the top. The only dude left on the mountain was behind me. He asked if I knew just how late it was. I said, more excuse to hike faster or something equally as dumb. Forgot the trail was covered in snow and went down the wrong side of the mountain. I somehow managed to refind the path after crawling up a steep hill. The last hour back was pitch black. Something was following me the entire way back. I had a huge rock for protection, lol. I bucked it after a while and just ran. Luckily, it was probably a deer or something. Prepay animals will follow predators, I learned. But that is another level of fear I don't want to experience again. Unexplained Experiences in the Woods of Eastern Kentucky I am posting this mostly to try and find some sort of community or answers. I am in Moorhead, Kentucky, and have been experiencing unexplainable things while I've been hiking around Eagle Lake or near Cave Run. I'm not a superstitious person, and am very rational when it comes to animals in our region. It will sound as if something is approaching, coming much closer than any animal should, And when I notice, I react, stomp my feet, etc. It stops. An unrelenting dread and overwhelming anxiety falls over me. I cannot shake it, and I know I have to leave at that point. Each time, as I've started to leave, whatever it is has charged quickly, coming much closer and essentially chasing me from where I've been. I refused to return to Eagle Lake after I experienced it the first time and chose to go to a pretty popular area near Cave Run. The same exact thing has happened more than once. I have not been able to shake the feeling. I have definitely been the only one in the area on both occasions and there have been no animals near. Definitely not ones large enough to make the sounds I've heard. My girlfriend has been with me on each occasion and has heard and felt the same as me. That he said he was by himself. I have definitely been the only one in the area on both occasions. My girlfriend has been with me on each occasion. 
Hmm. If anyone has seen, felt, or heard anything, please let me know. Edited to add, I'm not trying to claim Eastern Kentucky as a new cryptid, or that a ghost is following us, or anything. I wish I could believe it has somehow been the exact same creature exhibiting the same behavior four plus times in different areas, but it has become hard to do so. My girlfriend and I both agree that it has so clearly felt like something has wanted us gone. We've gone out so many times and have never experienced anything like this before or held any anxiety about going out. I carry. I'm not afraid of wild animals in our area. I've realized I sound crazy. But I really am just wanting some shared experiences. Thank you all. Goblins. Kentucky has cave goblins. There's the answer. Cave goblins. Alright, creepy encounters. Uh, my boyfriend got spooked by a strange noise in the woods. All right. First, some background info. I live in a rural area in North Florida with my boyfriend in a single wide just on the edge of a large forest slash swamp. I'm from Minnesota, but my boyfriend has lived in this area all his life. The property we live on has been owned by his family for a couple of generations. Anyway, a couple of nights ago, after I got home from work while I was chilling in the bedroom watching Netflix, my boyfriend came into the house in a panic state. It was about 8 or 9 p.m. and he was visiting his mom who lives down the block. He was super jumpy and alert. We've been together for almost nine years and I've never seen him like this. Also, he's not the type to scare easily. He's a veteran and has been in the Middle East multiple times, and he has never acted the way he did that night. I kept asking what was wrong, but all he would tell me was that he heard a weird noise in the woods while he was walking home and to keep the dogs inside. He stayed by the back door with a shotgun all night and into the morning. I've tried asking him about what happened that night, and he'd never elaborate. Or, he'll just brush it off. Just thought it was an incident that was worth sharing here. That's creepy. Stalked and followed to my house. I'm a military brat. My second tour coming to Japan, so I think I don't really have to worry about my safety. Never had problems here during the first tour. I was 13 at the time. No one is home and I decide to go to the convenience store right around the corner. I do my shopping and notice a guy at the end of the aisle glancing at me over and over. He had baggy, worn-down black clothes, super pale, long hair, looked like he hadn't slept for days, and super, super skinny. I quickly look away and just go to the next aisle, and he does the same, but not even in a subtle way. It was like we were playing tag or something because he was jerking and darting to whatever aisle I rushed to. Stupidly, I just hurry and pay for my stuff and leave, and I thought he didn't follow me because my head is turned to make sure he doesn't come out of the store too. I relax after I turn the corner. Literally just minutes before I am able to get to my house, I hear footsteps behind me, and I fucking lock eyes hard with the guy. He's all wide-eyed, and it scared the shit out of me, so my dumbass proceeds to speed walk to my house. He did the same. As I close my door, I see him speed walk past, still wide-eyed, staring me in the face. I was scared for the rest of the month since he knew where I lived. I'm 18 now, still in Japan, different house, and luckily never seen him again. Creepy shit. Charles M., 1957. When I was a child about 70 years ago, my grandfather told me a tale about his grandmother and the little people. She was tending to her garden one morning and moved a large rock with a spade to get to a space to plant a cabbage. Once the rock was moved, a little person appeared and asked her what she was doing there. And after she explained, the little person told her not to use her spade in that spot nor move any of the rocks there for one whole year, lest none of her plantings would ever survive again. She complied. After consulting the local priest, after the year, she never had a single failure in her garden. 
though it was in the midst of a great potato famine. She seemed blessed when everyone else's crops failed. I respect the ways of the old people whether or not I understand. Though I'm considered Irish by birth, American by location, I am Viking by blood. Viking I shall remain. Seeker of truths, I'm Norwegian. My grandmother Doris would tell us stories of the Nessiemen, or Nessies, Nessies, and she said there were like two little trolls that lived in the mountains, and she really seemed to believe that they were real. Robert Lampert, a hunting trail I used in southern Ontario in a heavily old wooded part of the creek system had a large green rock on the hillside that just shouted stay away from me. The north side was always clear to the ground. No leaves or twigs seemed to stay there. I would always stop there for a smoke break before continuing on. And for some reason, I always left a couple smokes at the base of the rock. I never felt threatened there, just watched. I also noticed that the small game trails that were everywhere else didn't seem to go within a hundred yards of that rock. I always felt little people were there, or something with a keen understanding. I had no bias for it, I just felt that way. Vira Halem In Indonesia, we also have the story of the little people who live in the forest and like to confuse people who are lost in the wilderness. One of my colleagues told me once that her daughter suddenly went missing while playing with her friends. They lived in a big palm plantation, and no one could find her after searching all day long. Fortunately, the next morning, somehow she was found among the bushes in front of her house. She told her parents that while she was playing, someone, possibly a woman if I'm not mistaken, approached her and led her somewhere into the plantation and made her sit under a big tree, providing her with food and water that luckily she didn't touch at all. For although that food might appear to be just any other harmless food, it is actually earthworms, maggots, and things alike. Ah, man, creepy. Thank you guys so much for joining me, as usual. Have a wonderful night. That'll do it.